<laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, we got some guests here on Come On Mountain. Yeah. Say hello, guys. Introduce yourselves. I'm Tara. I'm Jason. Who are y'all with? We are White Rock Homestead. White Rock? Mm-hmm. I'm excited, guys, to have these guys here on the mountain. We went over there to the Grady's house and got to hang out with them a little bit. We originally met them at the meetup there in uh, Oklahoma this mm -hmm. year. That was the first time, and we instantly kind of had a connection, and, you know, I could kind of tell that those were my type of people for sure. And uh, so now this is what, visit three? and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just a couple of months, so not too bad. Yeah. They're not too far away. I think they're, what, about four hours? Yep. Right, right about there, yeah. Yeah, so tell the people here that don't know y'all, a couple of people, there will be some spillover mm -hmm. here, but a lot of people on here won't know who you are, so tell them a little bit about your channel, what y'all got going on, and why y'all decided to live this life. This is going to be an interview with us. Oh, oh boy. awesome. So, uh, we're clearly uh, a homesteading channel, and we lived, I lived in Ohio, he lived in Michigan when we first met, and uh, I had a homestead in Ohio. Raised hogs, chickens, a couple random raccoons, uh, garden and everything. And uh, we met. The rest is history as far as that went. And we immediately started planning a well, southern we knew, homestead. Yeah, the big thing was we knew both of us had, when we first started talking, we both kind of had plans. My plans were kind of like, yes, I'm going to do something, but it's going to involve moving back to the south. I'd only moved back to Michigan for my kids to graduate high school they were already living up there and as soon as i retired i said i'm gonna move up to my youngest but then i'm moving south and then she had this dream to travel and kind of move south go to the warm weather but we didn't know where where south we just knew you know yeah we were michigan ohio so south could have been anywhere but <laughs> it's uh yeah. so we spent well three, three years, years actually traveling looking at all over georgia alabama north carolina arkansas um and we fell in love with arkansas and we did it was you can't come here and not fall in love with arkansas i agree every part of it uh well maybe not the right i'm 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 east. trying to figure out how there isn't more accidents on the roads because <laughs> if, if anybody drives like i drive where my head barely looks out the windshield i'm at everything else yeah it's gorgeous and as soon as you turn your head there's a curve there's something going on and i'm like there's been a couple times like luckily they put some rumble strips because uh yeah he's it'll remind you to come back on the road it, because the views um yeah the views and the area and the people yeah. yeah i take these guys right here all the time on uh little road trips little sightseeing things i, I do it quite often be honest with you, I think that's why no matter all the adversity that I've dealt with since I've been here for about a year and a half now, I'm never in a bad mood. Everybody talks about how positive I am and how I look at the positives and everything. It's hard not to be positive around here. It's Absolutely. gorgeous. I yeah. mean, if you're having a bad day, go get in your truck and take a little ride. And by the time you get back home, it's gone. And you're ready for the next day and kind of, kind of refresh. I try. It's hard for me to slow down. I'm very, very busy. Um, for me, that's my slowdown. Just go take a country drive somewhere yeah. through the mountains for an hour or whatever. And just, man, it, it it's a perfect little reset button. And, and the views can, uh, never get old. No. And like, you, know, you can see the same view 10 times and it still is beautiful. You know, you saw it it's time. never the same. Mm -mm. The weather and, and seasons and everything changes it on a daily basis. Uh, Mount Magazine. I'm surrounded by mountains here. I got gorgeous views everywhere. Mm -hmm. And every morning it's a different view because of the clouds or the moisture or the sun. You know, it, it looks different every single time, even though you're looking at the exact same mountain. So. And the fun part, we bought our property in the times that we toured Arkansas looking over a couple years was during the winter. You know, it was kind of a yeah, dual purpose trip was we wanted to get out of the north winter. So we said, hey, we're going to snowbird down, you know, to the southern areas to get better weather. Yeah. less harsh winter and we had bought our property with never seeing um arkansas in, in any season other than the middle of winter and so we figured if we loved it in the winter 
Yeah. We would love it. And we did. And, and so, it hasn't disappointed not no. one second. Yeah, it gets cold here and a little snow and everything. But that's kind of what I was looking for. I'm from Florida. It's the opposite. <laughs> I was looking for seasons. You know, y'all had seasons at least up north. They was just more extreme. Well, mm-hmm. and, and, and the big thing that we tell people because they, you know, we tell them, hey, we left here to get away from the snow. And they're like, but wait, it snows in Arkansas. And it does. Yeah. But the major difference that unless you've lived up north, you don't understand the difference is it'll snow here. Right. I mean, it could go up halfway up your door. Like we, it doesn't it, it'll snow and it does get cold. But the blue sky and sunshine comes out the next day. Yeah. As to where when you're up north, it's four months of gray, gray overcast. Like, you don't see the physical sun for, like, four months. And there's a lot of snow there. And I mean, here we have an annual snowfall, what, like, 12, 16 inches? Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Way different. I, I mean, that that's, for the people that's from up north, that's like a dusting. It is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, for me, from Florida, that's like blizzard. <laughs> you know? But yeah. I wanted seasons, but I didn't want extreme seasons. Like, I had people all the time tell me, oh, those ain't mountains and all that. It's mountains to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm from Florida. Everything's flat. Yeah. But the problem with going to get those real mountains that everybody keeps talking about, you also get those real extreme temperatures that go along with it where you got right. 10 foot of snow. And I'm more of like around a 10 inch snow person. Well, and yeah. that was our key was, you know, we told people because we got that same response when we said, well, we love the mountain views in Arkansas. And they're like, but Arkansas doesn't have mountains. All right, call them a big hill, whatever. Like we're not in we're in not the Colorado Rockies or something, but go to the Rockies and try to find 20 acres of usable land. Yeah. You know, and, and that was the challenge we found and why we settled with the property we had. And it's still a, our property. Like you've got way more flat ground here than we have on our whole 17 acres. Yeah, that was one of the main things was is you could buy all kinds of acreage and that was a thing the cost of land coming to arkansas was great but i don't want to buy 20 acres and i can only use two the rest might look pretty but i can't use it like that just doesn't make sense to me like yeah yeah i'm very fortunate here and one of the reasons why i knew i was buying this place before i even walked it that well because i'm up on a hill but everything's flat i mean i got a couple of areas but it pitches down but then it turns flat again so I would say 95% of my land is buildable, and Mm -hmm. that's huge, even though I won't ever build on that much of it, but it's nice to have the option. And it's huge in Arkansas, Yeah, because you don't, you're right, you don't find that vast of a space. Yeah, there was a lot of things that checked the boxes for me here. I've, I've always dreamed of having a view, and I have mountains on both sides of me, and I also have a creek that runs all the way up my drive. It's not running right now, it's a dry creek, but still most of the seasons it's running and flowing and gorgeous so i have views and another thing was i wanted to be away from everybody i wanted to get to my place and feel like i was the only person on the planet Mm -hmm. and uh do y'all feel like you get that here (laughs) oh oh very much so (laughs) i think we only passed one car yeah i mean we got slowed down coming up because i had to wait for the family of yetis that were sitting in the road (laughs) having lunch to get them to pack their stuff up and move off the road yeah i'm on back here a little bit i love it It, yeah it's a gorgeous drive up it was it was beautiful yeah it's you know that's kind of where the whole magic thing comes from you know it's we tell everybody it's magical back here because when you get here, you truly feel like you're disconnected from the rest of the world. And, yeah. and yeah. That, that's kind of what, what I, what I was wanting. And I kind of achieved that. What is it, Domino? Hmm. Domino's over there. Got the guard dog. On and the, the great part is, you know, like nothing wrong with people that live in the city. Like that's your choice. That's your decision. And, and, and a lot of people enjoy that the way that they are. But for those of us that want to be in an environment like this, where, I want to be able to go and do one, whatever I want, when I want, and not have a neighbor complaining, well, I don't like the color of your fence, or those yeah. style shingles aren't, like, if they're not paying my mortgage, which luckily for us, like, we don't have a mortgage, you know, we yeah. do this pretty much like what, you know, how you're doing it, like, it's all it, debt, free. debt free, like, yeah. pay as you go, and, uh, slows it down a little bit, it does, it, it makes does. it, but in the end, oh, yeah. the reward and that's sometimes you've got to remind yourself, you know, we get questioned, well, why don't you just go buy this? You know, you can get a loan, you can do this. And 
I, we could. We could get loans for days and be stuck in debt I like everybody daily. else. Why don't you have solar yet? Yeah. Why don't you go get a wood chipper? Why don't you buy a dozer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so you pick and choose the projects as you go along. And, yeah. and we beat ourselves up. I know we do. And I know, you know, just with our conversations, I know you, like, you look at yourself and you're like, well, why don't I have all this done? You know, and then... I know we just did one recently, a, a nine month, because that's we've been on our property well ten months now. But we did a mu nine month time lapse of what it started to where we're at right now, and even just us, even though we lived it, we did it, we see it every day. You go back and watch in nine months ago and look at where our property was and see, well, that's why our house isn't done because well we had we seventeen other projects going on. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even include all the projects. Yeah, but. I've only been here a year and a half. And, uh, you know, a lot of people's like, when this, when that. I've done an awful lot in a year and a half. It was a lot just getting that cabin going. And then, yeah, you, the you cabin, know, you build an extra. And where we're sitting was all woods. It mm -hmm. went like that all the way to over there. So clearing out a lot of land, getting the cabin livable itself, building this structure behind me. I mean, that's a lot. And for about a year of it it was by myself you know now i have mike here and he helps me out quite a bit it's definitely sped some things up for sure yeah speaking of which he's down there we're gonna get with him right after we get done recording here nice. how many minutes have we been on here 11 38 oh the eyes are still pretty good for an oh, old man look at, him, look at him <laughs> well, you missed the the one part though we did buy 17 acres in north central arkansas in the ozarks we're at the top of a ridge and uh, we we're building a tiny house right now. Well, it's on the border of being a tiny house slash little house. And we built a cabin for our oldest son out of the seven. He decided to sell his house and come down. So he's got a little cabin. We live full time in our RV, as do many, many homesteaders. And we put up. I well, have to say, I, we were just talking on the way up here. I mean, I think you're about the only fancy one out of most of our group that yeah, isn't living not, in an RV. Yeah, living in an RV. I mean, finally, you know, Mel and Gary are in their basement and, and Anthony and Roxanne. Well, I but... started. I, I actually started an RV before all of them. <laughs> uh, my yeah. homestead in Florida, I had a fifth wheel. Yep. So, now it was a fancy fifth wheel. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> now, that joker was sexy. <laughs> Ten-foot ceilings, fireplace, granite. A oh, countertops, yeah. two bedroom, one and a half bath, mm, indoor yeah. outdoor Ours ain't that fancy. <laughs> you know, it, it was a nice one, don't get me wrong, but I sold that with my property in Florida mm. and uh, came up here. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, I would have rather lived in a camper when I moved up here because the thing about the campers is, is you have built-in amenities already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I took a shower last winter right there where a pine tree was. In 18 degree temperature with snow on the ground with a water hose Uber. for a, a whole winter basically wow. and I uh, used the bathroom outside all winter and uh, and in the summer and everything else and had no amenities whatsoever so actually a camper would have been a like the Ritz Carlton yeah for me. and that was part of our plan knowing when we bought our fifth wheel because there was for what our travel purposes was, there was no need for two of us to have a 32 foot fifth wheel. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and because that was a pretty good size jump for us to go from a, a little 27 foot, you travel know, trailer. travel trailer yeah. to a fifth wheel that had a slide out and I mean, just so much more room. And, but we knew the intention in the long run was we're buying raw land and we need a place because the hardest thing that you can ever do when building is live in your construction Didn't because I? it slows everything mm -hmm. down. It, you actually stop yourself from projects because, Hey, I need to drywall this or I need to sand this or, but then you're like, now my bed's going to be covered in drywall yeah. dust. And well, I've renovated several houses while I was living in them to flip mm -hmm. to, uh, over the years. kind of, that's kind of how I, built financial security over Same. the years when Same. I was married and stuff. So I know all about that. And hence the reason why I built this, um, to be able to live out here where I, I can build a house or 
cabin or wh whatever I want to do, I'm not actually living in it, which means that I can tear the whole roof off that cabin now if I wanted to, and it doesn't matter. I, right. It was very hard to do anything. I had a lot of people ask me, how come you ain't doing this in the cabin and that? That exact same reason. There's not enough space in there, and I would have had to pretty much spend two days plastic and everything and roping yeah. off sections mm -hmm. and stuff just to be able to do a project it just wasn't worth it that's why it made sense for me to go ahead and build this and uh kind of live out here and now i'm free to do whatever i want i don't have to be on the timeline so, right you yeah. know and you talked about you know showering outside and being out in that cold yeah. and stuff i think that's just kind of a true testament to the love that you know you have and we have for this kind of lifestyle because oh, yeah. You know, you, you opened up with how happy you are and how positive you are. If you can go through having a shower in winter or cold weather and you still love it. The, the better man than me because I don't do cold. <laughs> my first night, not water my either. My first night here in the cabin with no insulation, no heat, no nothing in the cabin because it was just a raw abandoned cabin um, was 18 degrees. Oh. Yep. First night, first night on this property. And I instantly went to World War Winter mm. immediately. Mm -hmm. and heater got put in insulation i was two o'clock in the morning i'm in there stapling insulation to the ceiling around the clock getting everything insulated so i can uh beat winter yeah and a year and a half later i moved out <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, well and that just that definitely solidifies that justification of you know whether it's an rv that you're staying in while you build on your property or you're able to build a small because you typically like you know kind of where you've talked and the plans changed a little bit but if you're building something you have an intention for that building in that space yep. you know whether it's the home whether it's a shop whatever it is but when you have to build it first modified because you need to live in it well then you're rebuilding it twice because now you're like well that works while i lived in it but now i gotta tear all that back out yeah and then repurpose it back into the building so if you can do smaller i mean that's why with our son we did that was he's in a eight by 16 you know little cabin, shed cabin yeah. deal that and it's very minimal you know she originally had all these grand plans to build it and i'm like he needs a bed and a place to put his computer and done like we don't need a kitchenette we don't need all this stuff because when he's done with that cabin, it will get converted to just be a sleeping quarters. And it doesn't need, yeah, guest cabin. you know, a whole bunch of other things that I'm going to have to rip out and destroy. Oh, yeah. You know, and. I tell all of my people here, I always have a game plan, not a set plan. Because if you idea. can't adapt out here, you're never going to make it. Oh, never. That, there's no perfect, nothing ever goes like it's supposed yeah. to. Yeah. It's not. And as you live and as you evolve and as your property evolves and everything else, things change. Just like mm -hmm. originally I was going to redo the cabin, but living in there and dealing with the cold and the dust and the bugs and all that other stuff because of how unsealed it is and all that other stuff led me to not actually make it a house and move it more to a man cave type situation. I love all those ideas. I think it's a perfect space for it. Yeah, yeah especially now seeing it more in person. But you know, that I would have never thought of that unless I lived in it mm -hmm. you know unless yeah. I experienced the different seasons in there and the struggles and the and the stuff that does work and as well like that and like I said this behind me started out as a 10 by 10 pump house and <laughs> evolved into what you see back here speaking of that what do y'all think about the old tiny house that oh it's awesome definitely loving it that's the, the I've watched you know pretty much all of the build on it just kind of like man what is you know, what is this going to turn into? And you see it on camera and it looks awesome. But then when it, the, the, this tiny house is, as my great phrase goes with everything being gooder on the ridge, it's, it's ridge approved. It's definitely <laughs> way gooder in person than it is. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea and the concept and it's different. It's nice that it's small. Um, yeah. I mean, that was us. Everyone thought we were crazy. You know, well, why are you building such a small house? We don't need a big house. I don't have time to sit there and clean a big house. Right. When I left Florida and I got my divorce, I had a 3,200 square foot, two story house on a golf course. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of maintenance and a lot of work. And I can clean this whole house right here, um, in 30 minutes, spotless, mm -hmm. deep clean. 
Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's just me. And it fits you. Yeah. It, it fits your purpose. And that's what I love about small spaces is they're purposeful. And it's temporary. I, yeah. well, I mean, eventually of... it's going to be a great mother-in-law suite, you mm-hmm. know, type, right. type situation. Right. My house will definitely be a little bit bigger. It's probably going to end up being about a thousand square foot, somewhere around there. Something a little bit better so when my grandkids come and stuff, they got a little bit more space to kind of spread out. Yeah. But uh, I don't want another 3,200 square foot house. There's no. nothing about it I want. I'd rather have no. a 3,200 square foot shop. We yeah. <laughs> we bought the property and somebody had already started a block foundation um, for an over 2,000 square foot house. I mean, it was, it was going to be huge. And we sat down and drew out some plans to say, Hey, maybe we'll build on it. It's already here. And the more we've looked at it, it's those walls are coming down. We're just going to repurpose the block and do something better. Yeah. Um, but it, cause we did think about that was, well, do we build extra rooms just for, you know, we have seven kids and five grandkids. So do we want them to be able to come down? And our idea and concept is more, I'm going to, we're just going to put up smaller little cabins. Yeah. Um, and they want sleeping quarters. Cool. And then we're going to have an outdoor kitchen gathering area that when they do come down to visit, we're all going to be able to cook and have a meal under, you know, that shelter. Well, I kind of had a little ulterior motive to all the little cabins because mm. I love design and I love to try different styles. And so, by having tons of little cabins, I can indulge in my little Victorian shabby chic and Nana's cottage. And that'll be a little place where I can take the grandkids and we can go have a little tea party and I can outfit it in antiques and stuff. And, you know, one of our, our biggest builds will be uh, our cabin down by the creek. And I've we've named that Walden. I love Henry David Thoreau's Walden. And so that will be a distinct pioneer style. So. I will be able to indulge myself in all these different styles that I love that I can't like, wouldn't have that ability in a 3,200 square foot house because you're dialed into one style basically. So well, also we live this lifestyle to be outside. Exactly. True. So why have this big structure to be inside? Absolutely. You know, yeah. you get your minimal that you need to survive comfortably and stuff like that for the cold, nasty days and wet days and stuff like that. But it's all about being out here. I, I mean, we got all the square footage we need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I, I, I was going to say that exact thing was that none of us, you know, that are involved in any, you know, of our family group and stuff like none of them, bought the amount of land and area to say, well, I want to be in my house 24 seven. I am literally, it's 80, 20 for me. I'm in my house about 20% of the time and 80% outside. And most of that 20% is me sleeping. So basically if my eyes are open, I'm pretty much out here. I start my morning off right here drinking my coffee or my monster or whatever it is and then you know uh brush my teeth stuff like that and then i'm outside for the rest of the day until i would say until dark but even in dark i'm sitting here looking at the stars for another right. three hours because that's one of my favorite and things I to do guarantee in the evening see the view of the oh, stars here yeah. is it's gorgeous i spend every night at least two hours without exaggerating that explains the zero here. gravity chair so he doesn't yep. kink his neck he <laughs> yeah. can just Yep, just like this. Yeah, it's tilted right on back. <laughs> and I just literally sit here and listen to nature and look at the stars. And uh, when my son was out here, I, I would sit out here with him some and told him that that's one of my favorite things to do out here. Is just, it is. There's no light pollution or anything like that. Right. And uh, it's just gorgeous. And it's kind of my happy place. So My that, garden is I'm my here. happy place. I spent, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the garden and in the greenhouse. And I'm a good, big cooker. And so uh, I I do a lot of cooking. So literally half of our tiny house is kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I do a little cooking here. And there. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been known to throw down a little something, something. Yeah. It's time. But yeah, um, I want to get into the gardening, but I need to get set up for it properly. And it's not huge on my list right now because I got so much other stuff going on. 
but eventually I'm going to have the raised beds and stuff like that. I don't need a ton for myself as far as gardening goes. Right. I just need, you know, a couple of raised beds and stuff like that because it's just me. Now, if the homestead ever expands, then maybe I'll expand all of that. But right now, it ain't going to take much. I mean, honestly, I could grow enough in five-gallon buckets if I wanted to probably for me. Well, we grow all of our garden in lick tubs. We have over 100-some lick tubs because nice. uh, on the ridge, it's clay and it's rock and good soil. We are having to create and make from our chickens yeah. and from wood chipper and everything. And uh, when we put up the greenhouse, I'm a thrifter and I'm a cheapskate. And so I buy all of my seeds at thrift shops on clearance. I never pay more than 25 cents for a pack of seeds. And then I save them. And so I over planted thinking, well, you know, half germination, half not, no. I ended up with over 300 tomato plants, uh, hundreds of every kind of squash you can think of. And yeah, so. And the big gardens <laughs> are, I, like even ours, It that's a full-time job in itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is, but it's been fun, and I do tons of canning and, you know, uh, trying to do that full, well-rounded homestead that I had back in Ohio. Uh, I've been the impatient one because once you have it and then you sell it or leave it, that pull to go back to it is so strong that once we acquired the land, man, I was just in, like, I got to have it all back again. I want my hogs. I want everything. And, and so... Uh, yeah, I way, it, it, way over planted it in the It slows the progress of building, you know, because you you get the animals. Now you've got the care of that, and then you get the garden going, and, well, you've got daily care of that. So you got to kind of pick and choose. Yeah. So the holding off on the garden thing is probably way probably smarter Probably a smart idea. decision until, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right when now, you're ready, let me right know. Right now I would lose control of it for sure. Yeah. If you're not ready for it, it's easily something that gets away from you for sure. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, make sure that you go check these guys out. White Rock Homestead right here. I will put their link somewhere up here. There's yeah. the spot. Yeah, over there. It's, <laughs> it's going to be up there, I guarantee We're it. just a bunch of goofballs, and we yeah. film it for y'all to watch and make fun of if you want. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so. that's what we all do, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I love every single one of y'all, and I'm glad that y'all did this with me. And well, thank you for having us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I always say, guys, do something nice for uh, somebody today. Uh, make a small step closer to your goal. Hey, unless you're feeling froggy, go ahead and jump and do a big one. Come on. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's Monday, guys. It is time to get back at it and get on the grind. Love every single one of y'all. And as always, guys, nice to meet you. Come on. Keep it real. <laughs>